Hello, I'm going to show you how to create a cheat for the game Dishonored. Got Cheat Engine open, Dishonored, and a text editor. And we're going to try and create a cheat for the magic. So let's connect the Cheat Engine to Dishonored. And we're going to start with a scan for an unknown initial value. Four bytes is what you usually want to use that works for integers but if you're just doing increase and decrease comparisons you'll see floats there too 200 million records let's go back to the game see we're at full magic right now so let's use some of it go to cheat engine the game's now paused and we'll scan for a decreased value Wheel that down to 3 million records. Now the game's paused, so our magic shouldn't be changing. So we'll look for an unchanged value. And you can see the number of results going down. Okay, now let's set up some hotkeys to make this easier so we don't have to go out of the game. Go to hotkeys. And look for increased value. I already have it set to Alt Up Arrow. Let's clear that and reset it. Just click there and Alt Up Arrow. And Decrease Values, Alt Down Arrow. Okay. Oh, that just messed up our thing because I automatically did that one. Let's start with a new scan and do that over again. Wait till we get up to the top. magic. Pause the game. Let's look for a decreased value. And unchanged. I'll let my magic go back up. I'll look for an increased value. Let's use some more for decreased value. Now look for increased value. Let's use some more for decreased value. Go back up, look for increased value. See, some of those numbers are changing, so let's go back and look for unchanged. Little a bunch of those out. Decreased value. Increased value. Value. Increased value. Now, since the magic's at the top, that's where we started, go back and compare to the first scan and look for an unchanged value. Back to comparing to the last scan. Decreased. Let's go a little further. Oh, and go back to increased. Decreased again. Decreased again. Decreased again. And decreased again. Now, if you see the values over there, you notice two very interesting ones are 20. 
we have a manageable list now, so let's add all these values to our table by double clicking. These values are large numbers. They're probably floating points, so we'll select them all. And hold shift down and right click to change the type to floating. Yep, they look like they're probably floating point numbers. Seeing those values in the list, let's use a potion to get our magic back up. See those 20s change to 70s. Let's try and change one back to 20. Double click. We're still at 70, and that value changed back to 70. So that's not the driver. That number is probably set from this number. So let's change this one to 20. See our magic just dropped down. So we found the address. Now what we can do is find out what accesses this address. In the settings, what works for me in debugger options is use VEH debugger. And that loads a kernel driver, I believe. Windows debugger doesn't work for me, and I can't get the VM to work either. So we're going to right-click and find out what accesses this address. Yes. Now we have this new window here. Need some room. Let's go back to the game. We see it's already filling up with several entries. So these are probably accessing our magic value to show it every frame. So what I always do is click on it to see what happens, copy it to a text file, And now I have a record of that. And I'll be able to find that code next time if I want to write another sheet or if I forget. Because this address will change between games. If you load the game, this will probably be a different address. We well, see in the code what we're doing is loading the value from memory where ESI is the base address of a structure and A58 is the offset for the magic. And we can see in the address it ends in A58. A lot of things do that. They usually try and start their structures off at an even area of memory. So the base of this is actually that. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, give a little more room here, see what's going on. So our values are low. Let's use a potion. We can see three new addresses that were uh, accessed when we used a potion. Create a new file for those. Here we can see where the value is actually getting set. It's loading EAX, which is 46 hex, which is 70, is being set into our magic value. Now let's try and use some magic. These two were accessed again when we used magic, and a new one also was accessed. So let's mark this.
So if we want to make it so when you use magic it never goes down, we'll probably want to change this address. Let's take a look at the structure that actually starts at ESI. Copy the value for ESI. And now Control M will open our memory viewer where we can just browse. Now we want to go to dissect data structures. We'll enter that base address to find a new structure called magic base. And this is 1000 hex, so it'll include the A58. We'll go down and look at that. This is the value for magic, and if we look right there, we see a couple other interesting numbers. We're at half magic right now, so 100 might be our full magic, and 70, that was the last magic we had before we traveled. So let's see if we can see if those values change. We'll copy this address, we'll lock this one, and hit Control A to add a new one. And paste that address in. So now this memory is locked. It's pointing to the values that we stored, have right now, and this address is not. So it will contain current values. Let's go back and right click. We see the values going up. So this value went up to 70, which happens to be the last value we had. And this number is 69. That's kind of weird. So it's probably the last value we had as it was increasing. Here's another potion. We're at full mana. Now we can see the last value was 70. And it's now full mana at 100, so this is probably the maximum magic. And this is probably the last magic. Okay, I think we have all we need now to write the cheat, and that'll be in the next video.